Every race saw the helpless alien princess's cries for aid, but only the humans, who were ruthlessly stereotyped as bloodthirsty and impulsively violent, had the morality and the guts to step up and actually help save her life. Two Okampan diplomats, Yaksa and his aide Valen, flew through space. Though an invisible wall would be a more appropriate term, given the heavy silence filling the shuttlecraft. The silence reached a point where it bothered Valen enough that he felt compelled to break it and end Yaxa's disturbing, lifeless stare into the inky void. A deep, weary sigh filled the cabin. No, no, it's not. My daughter is dying and no one will help. Not the Zergans, not the Bainar, not the Vosh. They claim to care, but... Another sigh. Do you know what the Zergans told me? They would only help if we gave them mining rights. Mining rights for my daughter's life? And the Bainar demanded she marry into their royal family, like some kind of political hostage. The Vosh were worse. They said it wasn't their problem. Such cruelty. Selfishness. I don't know what to do. I'm so sorry, sir. But what about the humans? I thought they were known for their idealism and willingness to help others. A bitter laugh. The humans, we dismissed them immediately, wrote them off as violent, bloodthirsty brutes, but now, now I think that dismissal may have doomed my daughter. I was wrong about them, so very wrong, and now my daughter will pay the price for my prejudice. The weight of Yaxa's words hung in the air, the fate of the princess and perhaps the Okampan people seemed to balance on a razor's edge. The princess would die without help. But who would step up when the most powerful races had turned their backs? In that moment a glimmer of hope sparked in Yaxa's mind, a dangerous, desperate hope. The humans. The ones who, despite everything, might just be the only ones willing to risk everything to save an alien princess. The only question was we, would they? Or would the princess's cries for help go unanswered, leaving her to a cruel and unjust fate? Valen's brow furrowed in contemplation. Sir, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't a human delegation recently request an audience with the council regarding this very matter? Yaxa nodded wearily, his shoulders sagging as if under a great weight. Yes, a group led by the human ambassador, Bruce Dixon. He came before the council a week ago. And what did he say? Yaxa's gaze grew distant, as if reliving the memory. Dixon spoke with great passion. He argued that the galactic community had a moral imperative to aid any race in need, regardless of political or economic considerations. Valen leaned forward, intrigued. Did he provide any examples to support his case? He did. Dixon pointed to humanity's own history. Apparently, when they were engulfed in a brutal civil war, the rest of the galaxy simply stood by and watched. They waited to see who would win so they could exploit the victor. Valen's eyes widened. They did nothing to help, even as humans slaughtered each other. Yaxa shook his head grimly. No. Dixon asserted that had the other races intervened to help, rather than playing politics, billions of human lives could have been saved. Humanity would have been spared a brutal, decade-long reconstruction. Incredible. So what was the Council's response to Dixon's plea? A bitter laugh escaped Yaxa's lips. They spoke over him, dismissed his idealism as naive and simplistic. The Zergons sneered that it was humanity's own primitive aggression that led to their war. The Vosh delegate had the gall to imply that humans should focus on governing their own people before presuming to lecture their betters. Phelan's face twisted in disgust. Their betters? What arrogance! Indeed. Dixon was disgusted. He stormed out, but not before leaving a final warning. That the other races would one day regret their callousness and short-sightedness. Yaxa sighed heavily. I fear that day may be upon us sooner than we think. Valen was silent for a moment, connecting the dots in his mind. Then he asked softly, Sir, after the council spurned you, did you reach out to the humans for help with Lysara? Pain etched itself across Yaxa's features. He looked away, unable to meet Valen's gaze. No, no, I did not. But why? After everything Dixon said... Because of my own prejudices, Yaxa admitted, his voice tight with self-recrimination. I thought them reckless, uncivilized brutes. 
but in refusing to even consider asking for their aid, I see now that I was the one who acted uncivilized. The weight of Yaxa's words hung in the air, the silence stretched between them, heavy with the implications of his admission. Valen opened his mouth to reply, but before he could utter a word a shrill beeping filled the cabin. Yaxa's head snapped up, his eyes wide with shock as he stared at the blinking light on the comm panel. Valen turned to Yaxa with a puzzled expression. So what changed? Why are we now heading to meet with Ambassador Dixon? Yaxa leaned back in his seat, his eyes distant as he recounted the events. Shortly after my last plea to the Council was rejected, I returned home to Ocampa to be with Lissara in what I thought would be her final days. One night, as I sat by her bedside, my comm unit suddenly chimed with an incoming transmission from an unknown source. I was just as surprised as you are now. When I answered, I found myself face to face with none other than Bruce Dixon himself. The human ambassador greeted me solemnly, saying, I know we have not spoken before, but I have learned of your daughter's plight, and I have come to offer the aid of humanity. Yaxa nodded. I was stunned. My first reaction was to be wary, to ask what the catch was. What did humanity want in return for this supposed generosity? A fair question given the self-serving nature of the other races, Valen mused. How did Dixon respond? Yaxa's face softened, as if remembering something profound. He looked almost offended at the implication. You misunderstand our intentions, he told me. We do not offer aid in expectation of reward or favor. We offer because it is the right thing to do. Your daughter is an innocent in need. That is all the reason we require. Velen sat back, absorbing the weight of those words. Remarkable. Such altruism is rare in this galaxy. Indeed. Even then I had trouble believing it. I pressed further, asking how humanity even planned to help, given the extinction of the Osiractan plant. The cure, as far as we knew, was lost to time. And what did Dixon say to that? A faint smile tugged at Yaxa's lips. He smiled, as if he had anticipated the question. Ocampan records of your original homeworld are spotty, he said, but we have something you do not. An intact Osiractan seed vault. Our ancestral records indicate your people gave it to us as a gift during our civil war, though clearly that fact has been lost to time. Point being, we can likely synthesize the cure from those seeds. Valen's jaw dropped. They have Osiractan seeds after all this time. So it would seem... A gift from our past selves, preserved by the very race we dismissed as primitive. The irony is not lost on me. Velen shook his head in amazement. Incredible. So the humans not only offered aid freely, but they may be the only ones in the galaxy who actually can help Lissara. Indeed. Which is why we are now en route to meet with Dixon, to discuss the details of this potential cure. After so much despair, there is finally a glimmer of hope. The weight of Yaxa's words hung in the air. The fate of Lissara, and perhaps the reputation of humanity, now rested on this unlikely alliance. An alliance born of compassion, altruism, and a shared belief in doing what was right, rather than what was expedient. As the shuttle sped through the void, Valen couldn't help but marvel at the twists of fate that had led them here. The once dismissed and derided humans now stood as the last bastion of hope for a dying princess. It was a lesson, he realized, in the dangers of prejudice and the power of empathy. A lesson that, if heeded, could perhaps lead the galaxy into a brighter future. The console suddenly chirped, jolting Valen from his musings. He leaned forward, examining the readout. Valen sat in stunned silence, absorbing the gravity of Yaxa's tale, the weight of Lissara's fate and the incredible compassion shown by the humans hung heavy in the air between them. By the stars, Valen breathed, shaking his head in wonder. I had no idea the situation was so dire, or that the humans had gone to such lengths to help. Fjaxa nodded, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. Nor did I, old friend. In my arrogance and prejudice I nearly condemned my own daughter to death. But it didn't. Valen reminded him gently. 
Thanks to the humans, there is still hope, and that is no small thing. Yaksa managed a weak smile, though it didn't quite reach his eyes. You're right, of course, but this stasis pod, a 30% chance of failure, it terrifies me, Valen. His voice cracked and he looked away, blinking back tears. Valen's heart ached for his friend for the impossible choice he faced. Yaksa clasped Valen's hand, his grip tight with desperation and gratitude. Thank you, my friend. Your support means more than you know. The two men fell silent, each lost in their own thoughts as the shuttle hurtled through the void. In a matter of hours, they would rendezvous with the human ship, and Lysara's fate would be decided. It was a gamble, a desperate roll of the dice against the cruelty of fate. But it was a gamble they had to take, for the alternative was unthinkable. And so they flew on, clinging to hope, to the slim chance that humanity's compassion and ingenuity could snatch life from the jaws of death. It was a fragile hope, as delicate as a flickering candle flame in a tempest. All they could do now was wait and pray and trust in the goodness of a species they had once so woefully misjudged. The irony was bitter, but perhaps, Valen mused, it was a lesson they all needed to learn. A lesson in humility, in the power of empathy over prejudice, of compassion over callousness. A lesson that, if heeded, could change the very fabric of the galaxy itself. And so, as the stars streaked by in ribbons of light, Valen and Yaksa sat in silence, united in their desperate hope, their fragile faith in the better angels of humanity's nature. Hold on, Lysara, Yaksa whispered to the stars, hold on. The hiss of the airlock sounded thunderous in Yaksa's ears as he and Valen disembarked from their shuttle. The hangar bay of the human ship resilience stretched out before them, a cavernous space filled with the bustle of activity. Ambassador Dixon strode forward to meet them, flanked by a team of medics in crisp white uniforms. Yaksa's heart clenched as he watched them swarm around the shuttle, gently lifting Lysara's frail form onto a hovering gurney. Ambassador, Yaksa greeted, his voice strained. Thank you for receiving us. Dixon clasped Yaksa's hand, his grip firm and reassuring. Of course, we're here to help in any way we can. As the medical team rushed Lysara towards the waiting stasis pod, Dixon pulled Yaksa aside. His expression, usually so genial, was now grave. Yaksa, there's something you need to know, he said quietly. While researching Lysara's condition, our medical team made a disturbing discovery. Yaksa's stomach turned to ice. What is it? Dixon sighed heavily. The genetic profile of Lysara's illness. It bears a striking resemblance to a bioweapon the Zergans were developing during our conflict with them twenty years ago. Yaksa stared at him, uncomprehending. A bioweapon? Dixon nodded grimly. It caused the same symptoms in humans. We managed to develop a cure before it could be widely deployed, but the similarities are too close to ignore. Velan stepped forward, his face ashen. Are you saying the Zergons did this? That they deliberately infected Lysara? Given the rarity of her condition and its sudden onset, we can't rule out the possibility, Dixon said heavily. Yaksa reeled, his mind spinning, his daughter, his precious Lysara, not the victim of cruel chance but of deliberate malice. The thought made him want to retch. But why, he whispered, why would they do this? Dixon's jaw tightened. If I had to guess, an attempt to destabilize Ocampan leadership, the Zergons have long coveted your resources. Perhaps they thought that by striking at you personally, they could force concessions. Rage, hot and bitter, surged through Yaksa's veins. And you didn't think to share this with the Council, he demanded. Dixon met his gaze squarely. We tried, he said quietly. But just as they dismissed your pleas, they dismissed our concerns. They refused to even consider the possibility. Yaksa closed his eyes, despair and fury warring within him. The Council, the Zergons, the indifference of the galaxy. It was all too much. Yaksa drew a shuddering breath, forcing down the rage that threatened to choke him. Valen was right. Lysara was all that mattered now. Dixon nodded. The pod is prepped. We just need your go-ahead. 
Jaxa closed his eyes. Images of Lysara flashing through his mind, his daughter so young, so full of life, the thought of her laughter, her smile, her dreams, all snuffed out by the cruelty of the Zergons. No, he would not let that happen. He would not let the bastards win. He opened his eyes, his gaze locking with Dixon's. Do it, he said, his voice like steel. Put her under. Give your people the time they need. Dixon nodded solemnly. We will do everything in our power to save her, Yaksa. I swear it. As the ambassador turned to relay the order, Yaksa sagged against Valen, his strength leaving him in a rush. What if it doesn't work? he whispered, voicing the fear that gnawed at his heart. What if I lose her anyway? Valen tightened his grip, his presence a steadying anchor in the storm of Yaksa's emotions. You cannot think like that, he said firmly. You must have faith. In Lysera's strength, in the human skill, they will find a way. They must. Yaksa nodded, not trusting himself to speak. He watched as the medics loaded Lysara into the pod, his heart in his throat. This was it, the moment of truth, the gamble that would decide his daughter's fate. As the pod hissed shut, sealing Lysara in its cryogenic embrace, Yaksa sent a silent prayer to the stars. The pod hummed to life, its status lights blinking from red to green. Lysara was in stasis. And now all they could do was wait, wait and hope against hope. For the next move was not theirs to make. It lay in the hands of the humans and the whims of a universe that had proven all too cruel. Yaksa turned to Dixon, his eyes burning with a desperate intensity. Your people have one month, he said, his voice raw. One month to find a cure. I beg of you, do not fail. Do not let my daughter pay the price for the sins of others. Dixon met his gaze, his expression one of solemn resolve. We will move heaven and earth to save her, Yaksa. This, I vow, the Zergons will not claim another innocent life. Not on our watch. Yaksa nodded, too choked with emotion to speak. He could only pray that the human's determination would be enough. Enough to overcome the cruelty of fate, the machinations of the Zergons, and the indifference of a galaxy that had abandoned them. As Yaksa concluded his declaration of friendship, a medic approached, her face alight with cautious optimism. Ambassador Dixon, Counselor Yaksa, I have an update on the princess's condition. Yaksa's heart leapt into his throat. Yes, what is it? The medic smiled. Her vitals are holding steady. The stasis appears to be working perfectly. If this continues, we should be able to keep her stable long enough for the cure to be synthesized. Relief crashed over Yaksa like a wave. He sagged against Dixon, tears of gratitude pricking at his eyes. Thank the stars, he whispered. Thank you. Thank you all. Valen, who had been observing quietly, spoke up. If I may ask, Ambassador, what will happen now? With the princess in stasis and the cure in development, what's our next move? Dixon's face grew serious. Now we prepare for the worst. If the Zergans really are behind this, as we suspect, then they won't take kindly to our intervention. We need to be ready for any retaliation. I think we can't rule it out, Dixon said grimly. They've shown they're willing to use bioweapons. Who knows what else they're capable of? Valen shuddered. Stars above, what have we gotten ourselves into? Yaxa laid a hand on his friend's shoulder. What we've gotten into, old friend, is a fight for what's right. The Zergons have crossed a line. They must be held accountable. Dixon nodded. Agreed. But we must be smart about this. We can't tip our hand too soon, for now our priority is keeping Lysara safe and synthesizing that cure. And then, Yaxa asked, his voice low and dangerous, Dixon met his gaze, and for a moment Yaxa saw the steel beneath the diplomat's genial exterior. And then, Dixon said quietly, we make sure this never happens again, to anyone. A chill ran down Yaxa's spine at the ambassador's words. For the first time, he began to understand the depths of humanity's resolve. Their compassion was matched only by their determination to protect the innocent, no matter the cost. It was a realization that filled him with both awe and trepidation. The galaxy, he sensed, was on the cusp of great change. 
and humanity, for better or worse, would be at the center of it. As he looked around at the human medics, working tirelessly to save his daughter, and at Dixon, whose unwavering support had been a lifeline in his darkest hour, Yaxa knew one thing for certain. Come what may, Ocampa would stand with humanity. They would face the coming storm together, united by the bonds of friendship, gratitude, and a shared commitment to justice. The Zergons and any other race that dared to prey on the innocent would learn to fear that alliance. They would learn the true meaning of human resolve and Okampan loyalty. He turned back to Dixon, his eyes alight with determination. Tell me, Ambassador, he said, what can Ocampa do to help? Dixon's words hung heavy in the air, the weight of their implications settling like a shroud over the room. Yaxa leaned back in his chair, his mind reeling as he tried to process the enormity of what he'd just heard. The Vosh and the Bina, he whispered, his voice hoarse with disbelief. They were in on it too this whole time. Dixon nodded gravely, sliding a data pad across the table. The evidence is all there. Communications, transaction records, even a few damning video logs. They were careful, but not careful enough. Yaxa picked up the pad with trembling hands, scrolling through the data. With each passing second, his disbelief morphed into a simmering rage. Here, laid out in cold, hard data, was the proof of the ultimate betrayal. The races he had considered allies, even friends, had conspired to strike at the very heart of his people. Why? he asked, his voice barely more than a whisper. Why would they do this? Dixon sighed, leaning forward on his elbows. Power, he said simply. The Ocampans have always been a thorn in their side. Your people's innate telepathic abilities, your advanced energy manipulation technology, it made you a threat to their dominance. But they couldn't attack you outright, not without risking the wrath of the Council. So they decided to destroy us from within, Yaxa finished, bile rising in his throat. Destabilize our government, subjugate our people, all while maintaining the illusion of friendship. Dixon nodded. It's a tactic as old as time, divide and conquer. Yaxa slammed the data pad down on the table, his anger finally boiling over. And the council? You really think they'll do nothing, even in the face of this evidence? Dixon's expression hardened. I think, he said carefully, that there are elements within the council who may not be entirely surprised by this revelation. Yaxa's eyes widened. You're suggesting the council was complicit? I'm suggesting, Dixon said, his voice low and intense, that we cannot assume anything. We go in there, we present our evidence, and we demand justice, but we also prepare for the possibility that justice may not be forthcoming. Dixon leaned back, his gaze unwavering. Then we do what we must. We cannot allow this attack on your people, on the very concept of interstellar law and decency to stand. If the Council will not act, then we will. Dixon was silent for a long moment. When he finally spoke, his voice was heavy with the weight of his words. I'm talking about justice, Yaxa, about standing up for what's right, no matter the cost. I'm talking about sending a message, loud and clear, that this kind of brutality, this blatant disregard for life, will not be tolerated. Not now, not ever. He leaned forward, his gaze intense. The Zergons, the Vosh, the Bina, they think they can get away with this. They think they can manipulate and destroy and face no consequences. We need to show them how wrong they are. Yaxa swallowed hard, the enormity of the situation sinking in. And Ocampa, what would you have us do? Yaxa looked down at their joined hands, a symbol of the bond that had formed between their peoples, a bond forged in compassion, tempered in the fires of adversity. He looked up, meeting Dixon's gaze with a determined one of his own. Ocampa stands with humanity, he said, his voice ringing with conviction. Come what may, we will see justice done. For Lysara, for our people, and for the galaxy as a whole. Dixon nodded, a fierce pride shining in his eyes. Then let us prepare, my friend. We have a council to confront and a reckoning to bring about. He stood, 
his posture straight and unyielding, a man prepared to carry the weight of the galaxy on his shoulders. The Zergons, the Vosh, the Binar, they have no idea what's coming, but they will learn soon enough the true meaning of human resolve. Yaxa stood as well, his own posture mirroring Dixon's, and they will learn the strength of the Okampan spirit. We will not cower, we will not break, we will stand, and we will fight. The two men locked eyes, a silent understanding passing between them. The road ahead would be long and fraught with peril, but they would walk it together, united in purpose and unshakable in their resolve. The galaxy was about to change, and humanity and Ocampa would be the catalyst. The conspirators had no idea what was about to hit them. But they would find out, and they would rue the day they ever dared to underestimate the power of compassion, the strength of unity, and the indomitable will of those who fought for what was right. The chamber doors slammed open with a resounding boom as Yaxa and Dixon strode in, their faces set in grim determination. The low murmur of conversation died instantly as every head turned to face them. Counselors, Dixon began, his voice ringing out clear and strong in the sudden silence, we come before you today with grave news and graver accusations. He nodded to Yaxa, who stepped forward, a data pad clutched in his trembling hands. Esteemed members of the council, the Okampan leader said, his voice shaking with barely suppressed rage, we have uncovered irrefutable evidence of a conspiracy against my people, a conspiracy perpetrated by the Zergons, the Vosh and the Binar. The chamber erupted into chaos. Shouts of outrage and disbelief filled the air as the accused races leapt to their feet, their faces twisted in indignation. Lies, roared the Zergon delegate, his fist slamming down on his podium. These are baseless accusations, nothing more than a pathetic attempt to sully our good names. To agreed, chimed in the Vosh representative, her eyes narrowed to slits. The Ocampans have always been jealous of our superior technology and influence. This is clearly an attempt to undermine us. The Binar delegate simply sneered, his face a mask of contempt. The word of a minor backwards race like the Ocampans carries no weight here. This so-called evidence is not worth the data pad it's stored on. Yaxa's face flushed a deep crimson, his hands shaking so hard he nearly dropped the data pad. How dare you, he whispered his voice trembling with fury. How dare you stand there and dismiss the suffering of my people, the attempted murder of my daughter? He thrust the data pad forward, the damning evidence displayed for all to see. Here, he cried, here is proof of your treachery. Communications between your governments detailing the development and deployment of the bioweapon that nearly killed Princess Lissara. Transaction records showing the transfer of funds and resources, confessions from captured agents. What more do you need? The Zergon delegate barely glanced at the display before waving a dismissive hand. Forgeries, he scoffed, clearly fabricated by the humans as a pretext for war and conquest. We all know their history, their propensity for violence and aggression. He turned to face the rest of the council, his voice rising in righteous indignation. I move that the humans be censured immediately for this outrageous attempt to deceive this council and destabilize the galactic order. I further move that they be expelled from this body and all trade agreements be severed effective immediately. The chamber descended into Bedlam, with races shouting over each other, some in support of the motion, others in opposition, and still others simply adding to the confusion. Through it all, Dixon remained still, his eyes closed, his face an unreadable mask, but Yaxa could see the tension in his jaw, the white-knuckled grip on the edge of the podium. Finally, as the noise reached a crescendo, Dixon's eyes snapped open. He stood, and though he did not raise his voice, somehow it cut through the din like a blade through silk. The single word fell into the sudden silence like a stone into a still pond. Every eye turned to the human ambassador as he surveyed the room, his gaze hard and unyielding. Counselors, he said, his voice calm but laced with steel, we came here today in good faith seeking justice and accountability. We presented evidence, gathered at great risk and personal cost, of a grave crime against an innocent people. He leaned forward, his hands gripping the podium, 
his eyes blazing with a righteous fire. If this body will not stand for truth, for justice, for the defense of the innocent, then humanity wants no part of it. We withdraw, effective immediately. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the chamber, but Dixon paid them no heed. He simply turned on his heel and strode towards the exit, Yaksa falling into step beside him. As they reached the doors, Yaksa paused, looking back at the stunned faces of the council. You have made a grave mistake today, he said softly. One you will come to regret. Remember this moment, councillors. Remember it when the truth comes to light and the galaxy demands an accounting. With that, he and Dixon pushed through the doors and were gone, leaving a deafening silence in their wake. As they emerged into the bright sunlight outside the council chambers, Yaksa turned to Dixon, his face a mix of anger, fear, and confusion. What now? he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Dixon's jaw tightened, his gaze fixed on some distant point. Now, he said, his voice hard as tempered steel, we finish synthesizing the cure for Lysara, and then... Then we prepare for war. The silence in the medical bay was deafening as Yaksa and Valen watched the human doctors work, their brows furrowed in concentration. Lysara lay still, her chest rising and falling almost imperceptibly. The doctors moved with a kind of controlled urgency, their hands steady as they administered the cure that had been so painstakingly synthesized. Hours ticked by, each minute an eternity. Yaksa alternated between pacing the room and sitting, his head in his hands, his thoughts a maelstrom of fear and hope. Valen remained a steady presence at his side, offering silent support. The doctor's face was weary, but a smile tugged at her lips. Councillor Yaksa, she said, the treatment appears to be working. Princess Lysara's vitals are stabilizing. We're cautiously optimistic for a full recovery. The doctor nodded, her own eyes suspiciously bright. There's still a long road ahead, she cautioned, but this is a very promising start. Your daughter is a fighter. Yaksa could only nod, too overwhelmed to speak. He allowed Valen to guide him to a chair by Lysara's bedside. He took his daughter's hand, marveling at the hint of color returning to her cheeks. As they sat, the weight of the past few weeks seemed to settle on Yaksa all at once. To think, he murmured, that of all the races in the galaxy, it was the humans, the ones we dismissed as brutal and uncivilized, who showed the true meaning of compassion and civilization. Valen nodded thoughtfully, and not only did they save Lysara, but they were willing to stand up to the council to risk war in the name of justice. That is a kind of bravery and principle that is all too rare. Just then a knock at the door drew their attention. Ambassador Dixon entered, his face grave. Councillor Yaksa, Minister Valen, he greeted. I've just received word the human fleet is mobilizing and the Okampan military has pledged their support. Dixon nodded. We don't seek war, he said, but we will not shrink from it either. Not when the alternative is to allow the strong to prey upon the weak with impunity. Yaksa stood, clasping Dixon's hand. The Okampan people stand with humanity, he declared. Together we will face whatever comes, and together we will build a new galactic order, one based on justice, compassion, and the defense of the innocent. Dixon's grip was firm, his eyes alight with a fierce determination. So we shall, Counselor, so we shall. The three men stood together, united in purpose as the resilience hummed around them, carrying them forward into an uncertain future, a future that, for better or worse, they would shape together. Yaksa looked down at Lysara, peacefully sleeping, and felt a swell of love and determination. For her, for his people, for the galaxy itself, he would fight. The first blow had been struck, the conspiracy unmasked, the battle lines drawn. Now all that remained was to see it through to the end. No matter the cost. No matter the... The silence of the shuttle was broken only by the soft hum of the engines as Yaksa and Valen made their way back from the Zergon homeworld. The mission had been a failure, the hopes for a peaceful resolution shattered by the obstinance and aggression of the Zergons. 
Yaxa leaned back in his seat, his eyes closed, his face etched with weariness. They wouldn't even consider it, he said softly. Any form of compromise, any acknowledgement of their wrongdoing. They just made demand after demand, threat after threat. Valen nodded, his own expression somber. They've grown bold in their defiance. The bioweapon attack on Lysara was just the beginning. They think they can act with impunity now. Yaxa sighed heavily. We tried, Valen. We tried to avoid this path, but they've left us no choice. Just then, the shuttle's comm system crackled to life. A human news anchor appeared on the screen, his face grave. Breaking news, he began, his voice heavy. We have just received word that Ambassador Bruce Dixon has been assassinated. Yaxa and Valen stared at the screen in shock, their hearts sinking as the anchor continued. The Vosh have claimed responsibility for the attack, calling it retribution for humanity's interference in galactic affairs. This is a dark day for the galaxy, and a terrible loss for all who knew and worked with Ambassador Dixon. Yaxa felt tears welling in his eyes. Dixon, the man who had saved his daughter, who had stood up for justice and compassion when no one else would, gone, just like that. Valen reached over, placing a comforting hand on Yaxa's shoulder. He was a good man, he said softly, a true friend to Ocampa. The anchor was still speaking, his words now taking on a grim, determined tone. In response to this cowardly act of aggression, humanity has formally declared war on the Vosh, Zergon, and Binar alliance. Our fleet, along with that of our Ocampan allies, is already engaged in the first battles. We will not let Ambassador Dixon's death be in vain. Valen nodded, his own grief mixed with steely resolve. Dixon once told me that humanity could not abide suffering, that they would always strive to alleviate it. Now it falls to us to continue that mission, even in the face of this terrible loss. Yaxa took a deep breath, squaring his shoulders. Humanity showed us the best of what a species can be. Now we must honor their example and their sacrifice. We fight, not for conquest, but for justice, not for glory, but for peace. As the shuttle approached the Ocampan homeworld, the two friends fell silent, each lost in their own thoughts of the difficult road ahead and the debt they owed to the humans who stood by them when no one else would. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.